As a child, I loved to build things from Lego. It was so exciting when my siblings or I got one of those Lego sets. We would unpack the pieces and lay them out in front of us, planning our own little cities. We would use the booklet of pictures to help us go from step to step until we'd completed the job. We would have been lost without those little diagrams in the booklet. Surprisingly, the same principles apply if you're building a Lego tower or a new billion dollar football stadium. You need plans and diagrams that communicate. The diagrams must be clear, logical, and written in a universal language that has no ambiguity. They must make sense to everyone. Using diagrams are essential in higher maths, both to problem solve and to communicate. Let me show you what I mean. This is Think4. There are many questions in the exam where the diagram is already given, and your job is to use its features to set up the correct method and working to solve the problem. In this example, you have two curves intersecting, and you're going to use the diagram to decide how to find the shaded area. First, it's vital that you notice the points of intersection of the two curves, as they become your limits. Then you look to see which of the curves is the upper curve and which is the lower. Then you can integrate the upper curve minus the lower curve. Without the diagram, this question would be very challenging. In this integration question, you also want to find the total shaded area. When you have one function and areas above and below the x-axis, you need to plan out how to find the areas of each section bounded by the curve and the x-axis. Areas S and T will need to be found separately. The area T below the x-axis will be negative. Then you will change the negative value to a positive area before adding them together. Sometimes there's no diagram given. Often this is in vectors questions. And here a diagram can be very important. In this next example, you are given three coordinates and told to find an angle. To do this, you will need to find two vectors. The diagram will help you determine which two vectors are needed. For the angle PQR, you can see from the diagram you will need to find vectors QP and QR. Students lose marks in questions like this because they do not consider which two vectors are necessary. You must use vectors that both point away or both towards the angle. Otherwise, you will need to use the version of the scalar product with a negative in it, as shown here. There are other areas of the course where diagrams will help you. When answering questions about the angle between a straight line and the x-axis and using m equals tan theta, the diagram will help you see that you need to find an obtuse angle. Also, when solving circles problems like this one, where a diagram can help you find a way to start the problem. Again, without drawing a diagram, it's more challenging to see how to solve the problem and put the information from the question to good use. In the vectors topic, when you're asked to find where a point divides a line in a ratio, a diagram can help you organize your thoughts and plan next steps. Visual stimuli are all around us and they are like building blocks for our thoughts when we're problem solving. They help us step into a problem so we can get started and they also help us to then plan ahead to find our next steps. You may have heard the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words. In your math problems, you must use the diagram given effectively and if you don't have one, then you should draw one yourself as it will help you to organize your thoughts and select the correct method. Whether you are building your first Lego tower or the new national football stadium, learn how to use diagrams to their greatest effect. This was Think4. Thanks for watching.